of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. So I think the last time I was here, we installed the pastor. Tonight we're not going to install you, but we are going to anoint you with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So we pray tonight for all of you young people who are about to be confirmed that you are receiving gifts, gifts from the Holy Spirit, that they may help you in your journey of life. And so as we gather tonight with your family and friends, let us call to mind who we are in relationship to God, but also in relationship to one another. We hear in the scriptures and you hear in the gospel, the parable of how powerful God's love and forgiveness is in our lives. That God heals us and makes us whole. Lord Jesus, your cross and resurrection signaled a new beginning of peace and reconciliation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are a comfort to those who seek forgiveness and healing. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us a new commandment, that we love one another as you have loved us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, be Father, peace to be the love of will. We praise you, we bless you. Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? 
can he seek pardon from his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days, set enmity aside, remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments, hate not your neighbor, remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to be sold 
along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of, one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. This group for receiving the sacrament of confirmation. Father Andrew, yeah. do you think they're ready? They are ready. Wow. And now I have to ask for confirmation. Do you think I can trust Father Andrew and Father James? Do you think, uh, James, do you think they're ready? We're over oh, James, are over there. So <laughs> they're ready. So do you think I can trust both of them? Yes. So parents do. You think they're ready? Yes. yes. Good. So we should welcome them, shouldn't we? Yes. Come on. Now be seated yeah, for a minute. You know, the gospel is not a gospel that I can kind of explain too easy, but the, all the readings today are about forgiveness. And I guess Jesus was quite clever when he said, he wasn't going to, he gave examples, not about forgiveness, but about debt. I don't know if you, any of you have ever been, ever been in debt, but I know when I went to college, when I graduated, I was in debt. And it worried me for a long time. But the story today in the Gospel is beautiful because you have this man who probably, you know, was in debt for millions of dollars. And he was forgiven the debt. But what did he do? He went out and got another friend who owed him maybe just a few hundred bucks. And what did he do? He threatened him. He told me how to pay back all the money right now. And he was willing to even forgive the few hundred bucks. He had been forgiven millions of dollars. And this all started because who? Peter, good old Peter said to Jesus, how many times should I forgive my brothers and sisters? And if anybody needed forgiveness, for Peter was the one that was always putting his foot in his mouth. He was always in trouble. And he was kind of measuring, you know, probably, you know, those feelings you have sometimes. Sometimes it's in brothers and sisters, and sometimes sisters and sisters and brothers and brothers. Or sometimes it's parents with kids. You know, I don't know if I can really forgive you this time. Or how much am I going to forgive you? But Jesus is telling us more than anything else. Forgiveness is a gift from God. And that's why we have the whole sacrament of reconciliation. Because we have a hard time forgiving. Not only others, but even forgiving ourselves. And you heard it in the first reading from Sirach today. Sirach said, we prefer to hold on to the evil. We prefer to hold on to the guilt. We prefer to hold on to the anger. We prefer to hold on to everything that is bad. 
We don't want to let go. And it eats us up. We live with a divided heart. I love that the phrase I used to use, this little story, it's about, I guess, it was some famous English writer, and I can't remember who it was, but he went out west and he was researching, you know, the different ways of life of different people and how they lived. And he was intrigued with the Indians in Oklahoma or somewhere like that. And he sat down one day with one of the wise men of the tribe, one of the, what would they call him, like a, the, the religious leader. And he was talking about life, and talking about how you come to agreements, and how do you find forgiveness in your life. And this Indian was beautiful, he gave a wonderful example. He said, you know, I have two dogs in my life, in my heart. I have the good dog, and I have the bad dog. And it all depends which dog I want to feed. Obviously if I feed the angry dog, I'll be angry. But if I feed the good dog, I'm at peace. And that's kind of really what we're trying to get at today, Jesus is trying to explain. It's hard to forgive, but it's even harder to forgive yourself. And it's even harder to let God heal you and forgive you. Because when we're not at peace with ourselves, when we're, in a sense, upset, we're feeding the angry dog in our hearts. And God wants us to feed the good dog. <coughs> He wants us to be at peace with ourselves. And that's what we're talking about tonight, gifts. What kind of gifts does the Holy Spirit give to you? The first gift is the gift of wisdom. What's the greatest wisdom that God can give you? It's a simple wisdom to know God, to love God and to serve God with your life. Nobody can make you serve God. Nobody can make you love God. Only you can respond to that gift. Because God loves you unconditionally. It's up to you to respond to that love. So God is saying, I give you the wisdom to know me, to love me and serve me. The gift of understanding. I gave you the example of the Indian. If we don't understand ourselves, who are we feeding? Are we feeding the garbage in our life? Are we feeding ourselves with anger? Are we feeding ourselves with torture? Or are we letting go and letting the Lord heal us? So that we can feed ourselves with God's grace, God's love, God's forgiveness, God's mercy. So when we are at peace with ourselves, what happens? We're at peace with one another. And that's a very special gift. To the sacrament of reconciliation. What does the priest want to do for you? He wants you to let Christ into your life. He wants you to help you let Christ heal you. And yet we're afraid to let Christ heal us and help us to find peace. I look at our world today. I look at society. We have a lot of problems. And a lot of people are upset. And a lot of people are angry. Because they're feeding themselves with the frustration and anger. Instead of letting the Lord feed them with His peace and love and healing. The gift of knowledge. What do we want to know? 
You know, you're about to graduate, some of you are going to graduate from high school, you, you know, you want to know something, you want to go to college, or you want to, everybody wants to know everything. But today you can take out your phone and Google everything. <laughs> but is that the kind of knowledge you want to know? You know, we have to think for ourselves. We can't just let be passive and receiving knowledge. But what kind of knowledge does God want us to know? He wants us to know what is the truth. And the truth is not easy to find in our world today because we've got so much knowledge. To search and find the truth is not easy. But yet, he's, God has given us that gift to find the knowledge, to find the truth. How about goodness? Where does goodness come from? The knowledge to know God. The knowledge to love the Lord. When our lives are at peace, what do we do? We see and we give and we respond to the world as normal human beings. We say please, we say thank you, we help one another. And you see goodness in the world. If you don't see goodness, what do you see? You see the contradiction. You see the evilness. And God wants us to live and share the goodness that He puts in our lives. The gift of beauty, recognizing beauty. No matter where you see the beauty in the world. If you go to the beach and see the sunrise, or go to the mountains and see the sunset, it touches you. It touches our hearts because we recognize God is the creator of all of this. This is something special. It speaks to us, not with words, but just speaks to us because we recognize something so unusual and beautiful. And yet the most beautiful thing that God has ever created in this world is you. Each and every one of you were created in the image and likeness of God. Life is the most sacred thing that God created. On the sixth day, God said He made man and woman. And He said that it was very good. Do we recognize the goodness that God has given each and every man and woman the power to be co-creators with God? The power to be able to create life. The gift of counsel What's counsel? It's the gift to be able to live your faith. Does that mean you have to go out and teach everybody? St. Francis of Assisi said it even better. If you can't teach, you can live your faith. When you go out into the world every day, tomorrow morning when you go to work or when you go to school, how do you live your faith? How do you treat one another? Do people recognize you as a person of faith? By your actions? by what you say, by what you do. That's a challenge. That's a gift from God. To be able to live your faith every day. The gift of courage. You know, every time I hear about courage, we always think of the macho approach to life. Courage is not about strength, physical strength. Courage is about being heroes for God. And if you know anything about heroes, heroes do great things. Not because they're strong, but they see a need, and they react, and they do something because they see there's danger. A few months ago, there was a, an accident, I think, up in, I think it was Illinois, on a school bus. The school, the school bus driver had a heart attack. There were 7th and 8th graders in the bus, 60 of them. And one little boy in seventh grade ran up to the front of the bus, put his leg on the brake and just steered the bus off the highway. Nobody was injured. And the beauty, of course, that evening he was on the evening news with his parents, and they were calling him a hero. And the kid just said, I just want to go home and have my dinner. <laughs> he didn't want anything to do with hero stuff. But he was a hero. Because he saw a need and he reacted. 
That's what it means to have courage. The admiral in charge of Navy, Navy SEALs in San Diego said, you know, we want courageous cadets, but we don't want just physical courage. We want to have moral courage. People who are willing to sacrifice. The courage to give. That's what it means to have courage. The gift of piety. Very precious gift. It means real. Are we really who we say we are? I'm a Roman Catholic. What does that mean? Do you know who God is in your life? Do you know who Jesus Christ is? Do you have a relationship with God? Do you have a relationship with Jesus Christ? Oh, I'm busy. You know, I go to church on Sunday. But what kind of a relationship is that? How do we begin our day? A moment of reflection and just beginning and asking God to be with you on every day you begin. Shaving or putting on your makeup or brushing your teeth. Look at the mirror and say, thank you Lord for this day. Be with me Lord on this day. Then at the end of the day, oh, we're exhausted. We can't do anything. And yet Ignatius Loyola has a beautiful prayer called the Examine. He says you can sit down in your chair just before you go to bed. Or just lay in bed, close your eyes. And just recall, recall your day. What happened? Who did you meet? Was it a happy occasion? Was it a sad occasion? Was it challenging? For the happiness, just thank the Lord. For the challenges, ask the Lord to give you the grace and strength to do better the next time. You're in relationship. You have a relationship with your Creator. The Lord is there to instill in you a sense of who you are, but a sense of peace. He's there to renew you with the grace and peace of His love and forgiveness and mercy. And He's also there to give you that courage to respond to the needs you face in life. Finally, the gift of fear. Why should we be afraid of God? And yet, a lot of people are afraid of God. They're afraid, you know why? Because God can change us. And God can change us radically. Anybody who goes to any kind of addiction, any kind of addiction, from drugs to alcohol to whatever addiction you can come up with. The first step in the 12-step program is to surrender to the power of God in your life. And some people are afraid to do that because God will change you. He will make you whole. He will heal you. That's a powerful gift that God wants us to receive. And that's the powerful gift that we're talking about in the scriptures tonight. The power to be healed by Jesus Christ. The power to be whole. The power, above all, to be at peace with yourself. Come from Andy, you are receiving gifts. We ask you to open these gifts, unwrap these gifts, and use these gifts in your life. You can use them over and over again. You can use all of them. But they'll always be there for you. Because God sent His Son into the world to help show us the way, to teach us the truth, and to give us the life. May that way be always there for you. May you always search for the truth. And may you always know the way to heaven. Amen. Amen. Father Paul, uh, Father... James, I ask you to all please stand. At this time, Confirmandi, we ask you to make your commitment to your faith. 
We ask your parents and all your family and friends that we gather here tonight to recommit themselves to their faith in God. And so I ask if you renounce Satan and all these works and all these empty promises. Amen. What is your faith? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? Amen. Amen. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life? Who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to in a special way, just as it was given to the apostles in the day of Pentecost. Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon you to confirm you with his abundant gifts, and through his holy anointing conform you more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, brought these your gifts, your servants, to new life. By water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel, and the spirit of fortitude, the spirit of knowledge, and the spirit of piety. Fill them always with the spirit of fear of the Lord. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.
as we have come before the Lord and we have anointed you. Now we pray for you and pray for the needs of this community that the Lord will be with us. So Heavenly Father, on this night, you have blessed us in a very special way. We pray especially too that as we come before you with our prayers and petitions that you hear us. For the church, that we may be a model of forgiveness and mercy in a world that shouts out for vengeance and retribution, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our Bishop John Noonan and for our clergy in the diocese, may the Holy Spirit support them in their ministries. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For catechists, and all those who teach the faith to children, catechumens, and learners of all ages, that their ministry may help both student and teacher grow in knowledge and passion for their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the newly confirmed, who have received the fullness of God's Spirit, that standing at the altar of the Lord, they may share the banquet of Christ's sacrifice, calling God their Father, in the midst of the church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us in this faith community, that we may always receive with joy those who seek the Lord with a sincere heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your own personal intentions, you may have deep within your own hearts. For these, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we give you thanks on this day, especially for these who have received the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May these gifts grow in their hearts so that they may truly come to know you, love you, and serve you, Lord. By serving their brothers and sisters in Christ, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. There for now and for ages unending, with all the hosts of angels, 
We sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered went into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
steal your own daughter with that? Well, you yeah, know. to our confirmandi, to the quality number of nine. <laughs> but we had the feeling today that the Holy Spirit is flying around our parish in hands the whole day. And finally, we celebrated the sacrament of confirmation. Your Excellency, thank you so much for being with us. And congratulations to you, young people, You've been made. <laughs> Correct? You know what is the youth group in our parish? <laughs> no? Talk with your catechist, Mr. Matt. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, auto servers. So far, so good. <laughs> and thank you to the music, too. So. My, brothers, my brothers and sisters, please pray one for your Mary for these nine people this evening. They don't need a prayer. They're starting with the sacrament, new step in their lives. Thank you, everyone, for your prayers and being here. Thank you, Father Andrew, and blessings on all of you tonight. I guess I need my three. I, I'm just giving my signals to my three, my two guys that they, they got to get ready. But uh, blessings on you, confirm, those who received the sacrament of confirmation. I pray that those gifts, as I said, use them, and they'll always be with you because God is there for you 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord will transform you. So I guess to all of us, it's time to go. So you, you better get up, don't you? <laughs> so are you ready to go out and celebrate? Yes. Are you exhausted? Yes. Good. That's good. So go and celebrate. So the Lord be with you. And in the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen.